Joey, you mentioned before this Sweden side and, and uh, the Sweden team, what they're doing as, as a national program inside the country with football. Yeah, and it's it's wonderful to follow what's happening. I played in Sweden in 2005, and um, just following what they're actually doing long term, they've been successful in men's and women's, and what they're doing is um, taking a real emphasis on youth development. So AIK, for example, is the biggest club in Sweden. They're now educating people to look after their kids' programs from 8 to 12. They're, they're bringing in things like child's rights, looking at the UN Convention of the Rights, making sure that a child's well-being is looked after, which means things like early selections. They're not doing that anymore. Um, so there's there's real priority on a long-term approach on their youth development, on kids enjoying their football. So this is what we can learn from uh, in, as Australians as well, that it's not just about this highest level, it's the culture and, you know, it's looking at everyone that's important to the game. I, I think we should also um, mark Sweden here. Are, are we mm -hmm. seeing um, a resurgence? Sweden's always been thereabouts, but we saw them with the silver medal at the last Olympic Games. They've mm -hmm. uh, now qualified uh, for Tokyo. Um, yeah. Is this a team that is building? Is this a, a, a strong team of the future that will start winning these bigger tournaments? Well, it's not just a strong team, it's a strong country. Um, I've like I said, I keep in touch with people from there and they are so serious about the long-term um, success. And so once you start looking at long-term, they, they take everything so seriously. So that includes youth development, that includes um, children's football. Um, oh, we just love seeing Ben Sanders in full slot, don't we? But yeah, look at the recovery <laughs> of the... And, and this is what um, Sweden offers as well, just in their defensive mentality it, it shows an intelligence about their football as well and that's what they grow up on they they are improvers they are learners that even though they get success at these tournaments they don't say oh well you know we're doing really well they're continually they've got teams of researchers um, that are continually wanting to to be better they have this metra in i think it's wonderful in in youth development as many as possible for as long as possible in the best environment possible. So that's why they've taken out early selection. Don't select players under 12 because we want to keep as many players in the system as possible um, for as long as possible. Again, that long-term approach of growing a love of the game and then in the best environment possible. So they take seriously, you know, education. It's not just, oh, let's put on a session for these players. It's every, every um, adult there is being educated. They call it in pedagogical principles, you know, how to, how to um, kids learn and how to players learn. So this is a powerhouse of um, evolution in football, Sweden. Even though you could say here, it is somewhat a simple approach to how they play, very defensive, you know, the, just the basic principles of being so compact in defence. Um, and w with the ball, you know, they, they're not expected to have a lot of possession, but they're, they're, they're tactically, they're smart. And they're, when you you have that learning attitude, even we hear from the coach saying, you know, the, the players need the responsibility to make the decisions. Um, that That's a great culture to be a part of. It will give you long-term sustainability, and that's why I admire Sweden so much. Look them up at home if you want. Marco Sullivan at AIK is just doing fantastic stuff that hopefully we can bring back here into youth development, which I think we need a big focus on here in Australia.